Hello everyone and welcome to episode 22 of the Merry Go Round podcast. My name is Mary Brasha and I'm your host. This podcast is powered by Selkirk Sport. We are Pickleball. Before we hop into this episode, I want to talk to you guys about Selkirk's amazing line of pickleball nets. Whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, Selkirk has the perfect net for you. When you choose a Selkirk net, you're not just choosing any net, you're opting for the official net of the PPA Tour, where excellence meets professional play. With Selkirk's line of nets, you can play pickleball anywhere. Selkirk's range of nets cater to every player's needs, offering budget-friendly choices for casual enthusiasts and premium options for those with a competitive edge, ensuring quality play for all levels. So if you love pickleball as much as I do, check out Selkirk's Pickleball Nets. Get the freedom to play anywhere and elevate your game with the net trusted by the pros. Selkirk's got you covered. If you're interested in getting a net of your own, go to selkirk.com slash collections slash nets. You can also find this link in the description of the show. Super thankful for everyone who keeps tuning in to these episodes. And if you like the Merry-Go-Round podcast, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We just got back from the Houston PPA. It was another good tournament run by the PPA, and now the tour is coming to SoCal this week. It is a home tournament at Los Cab, and I'm just super excited to be able to play at home and be surrounded by the SoCal Pickleball crew. It's going to be so fun to cheer and support all the people we get to practice and train with in SoCal. So really looking forward to this event. If you are in the SoCal area, be sure to come out and support Pro Pickleball. It'll be a super fun weekend. Now I'm going to introduce you guys to our guest for the day. He is a top 10 singles player in the world, originally from Spain. He has now risen through the ranks in Pro Pickleball and is one of the most entertaining and charismatic players on tour. And he's also really good at the sport. And he's my current mixed doubles partner. And we are growing together as a team. And it's been super fun sharing the court with him and having the good positive vibes and energy. So I'm super excited for you guys to hear from today's guest, Jaume Martinez Vic. Hello, Jaume, and welcome to the Merry Go Round podcast. Hi, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? I know you're not a big morning person. So is this early for you? Um, no, actually, I had to wake up to run some errands. I had to like uh, go pick up my car today. It was landing in uh, LA. And so I was uh, awake at like at 730. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm very awake now. <laughs> you are wide awake. And wow, your car has been sent to the mainland, where are you gonna go today, next? Where are your travels taking you? Uh, today, I um, after this, I'm gonna have breakfast because I haven't eaten anything yet, but uh, mm-hmm. I will go to Los Cap, train a little bit, nice. and then I'll go to the host house where I'm staying, it's in Newport. So, so yeah, that's my plan for today. Okay, sounds good. Well, Jaume, you are one of the most entertaining players on tour and you're so good at pickleball. I want you to tell the viewers a little bit about your recent success. You had a great run in men's doubles with Augie in North Carolina. How did it feel to make the final? Um, yeah, it was it was awesome. I I kind of knew on the back of my head that at one point it would happen just because I had to put like a bunch of stuff, to, stuff together in my in my doubles game. Uh, I always uh, got mostly confused uh, between singles and doubles. I never had the the chance to divide divide it and learn just doubles or just singles. And so finally it's coming along and I feel very comfortable playing doubles now. Yay! You're a double specialist now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're so good at singles too. Um, yeah, no, I, I actually have to, I have to say that I'm really, really enjoying playing doubles. And before, mm. five months ago, I actually didn't like doubles that much. I thought that singles was the way to go. And mm. now I'm starting to develop more liking towards doubles than singles. It's kind of interesting. Really? Okay, good to know. Well, can you tell us a little bit about, 
you know, the difference and what you're working on in your doubles game right now. And if you have something, what's like a tip for someone who's trying to work on that too? Um, well, my, my trick or my key has been to, to watch a lot of film. Um, right. I always, I always knew, well, as, as everybody knows, I'm not like a big uh, training person just because I always thought that, um, since I trained a lot in tennis and I did spend a lot of time, a lot of hours developing my tennis background. Um, I did think I, I do have all the strokes, but I never put the time on learning uh, patterns or structure in the point. And that was what I was lacking the most in my doubles. And I put a little bit more time on watching uh, other people playing like better pros mm -hmm. than me. And uh, it made the whole total difference. So I would say for people that, um, does have a big background in tennis. Just put time on watching film and how pros move, where they think, and and how do they cover the counters. And for people that don't have that uh, that strong background in tennis, I would say then they have to drill a little bit more their shots. Uh, that would yeah. be my my advice. Great advice. Okay, pretty soon you're gonna have to start your own podcast and YouTube videos, you know, to give all the advice to everyone. <laughs> I I actually would love to have one if it wouldn't be so much work. <laughs> I'm pretty busy living my yeah. life day to day in the road. So uh, I don't even know how would I start the podcast, honestly. <laughs> well, that's okay. Maybe in the future. But yeah, Jaume, you are on the go. You are always in a new place. I feel like when we try to coordinate our practice, which by the way, side note, it was so fun when we trained at Los Cab before we started playing some mixed doubles together. I remember you were trying to hit my shot, the merry-go-round, and you know, you're still working on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a, on my side, it was a total fail. Um, I, I think it takes a different set of skills that I have not developed or will develop anytime soon. So I'll let you be the, the queen of the merry-go-round and I'll just stay behind on that. Thank you. Thank you. But no, anyway, what I wanted to say is you're on the go and you're super busy, but what is a day in the life like of Jaume? Um, it depends if there is competition or not. If there is competition, okay. it's pretty simple. Um, just going, just waking up like, uh, late probably, uh, <laughs> rushing to my matches to the warm up with you. Um, and then just, uh, going through my day. But, uh, a day when I'm not competing, I'm trying to figure out what's my next move. As, as you know, now more than anybody, I'm like last minute kind of guy decisions. So, yeah. so I won't have a clue of what I'm doing. Like the next two days, it just, everything changes. If I have a plan from somebody telling me like, come here, do this, do that. I always say yes. And I get busy and yeah, uh, I, I have no clue what I'm doing. So <laughs> just improvising. You, you definitely go with the flow, which I'm trying to get better at because I am such a planner and it's okay. I guess there's different ways of functioning with this crazy pro pickleball lifestyle but yeah it's so funny how we're opposites but you know what we make it work and we are a rising team in mixed doubles i'm so excited to play with you this weekend at the los cab open it's at my home club you're playing with tyson this weekend too are you excited about that yeah, I'm, uh, well, I'm super excited to play with both of you. Uh, with Tyson, just, uh, we, I played, I played a lot of rec with him and I feel like, uh, we can do very good. We have a uh, very high energy both and we, we can joke around. So, so yeah. definitely I'm very excited to, to play with him. Also, he has a very, uh, he's a very powerful player, just like me. We like to like, uh, hand battle and, and drive and serve big. So, so I can't wait for that. And, and for you, I'm really excited too, because, um, we starting to find our patterns that work and, and, and really yeah. melting our games together. At the beginning, it was a little harder for us that we didn't understand yeah. much when you slide, when, when I'm covering stuff like that. Yeah. But now I feel like we, we melting it together and, and, and it's just exciting to see how our games, uh, melt together and develop. It's, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's super fun and it's super fun to build on that and just keep getting better as a team. I think that's really important for any partnership in pickleball is to play multiple tournaments with someone to be able to like get used to one each other and 
build that chemistry, all that kind of stuff. But um, super excited to play with you as well. We have the energy. We were so close to beating Deckel and Tina, and they made the final. So you know what, everyone? We are on the way. Yeah. But Jaume, when you are not playing pickleball this weekend in California, are you going to go surfing at all? Um, well, yeah, I would actually like to do that. Uh, I, I just saw that today, Colin and Kento, which are my, my best friends in tour, yeah. they just went surfing in San Diego and I'm mm -hmm. a little jealous of that. So if I'm not playing yeah. on the weekend, I'll probably drive to San Diego and try to catch some surf for sure. Okay. Sounds good. Well, we want to jump back in time a little bit to pre pickleball and tell us about where you're from. Uh, I'm from Spain, uh, from Mallorca originally, uh, born and raised in Ireland. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, what did you do growing up? Like, what did you do there? Uh, my, I guess my growing up, it's uh, very different of the growing up that uh, people in U.S. have, I would say, or at least what I've seen. Um, I I grew up more like a, like in, in a suburb where where you take your bike and you go hang out with your friends, play soccer in the street, you know, more like a, like a free soul. I was most of the time out of the, out of the house. If anything, my parents had to call me and be like, dude, you have to come home. Well, everyone, you may notice that Jaume is now in a different spot because his phone overheated. So we're glad you made it back, Jaume. Well, I'm glad there was like a shade parking like right next to it. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> we are glad you made it back and we can continue this interview. So let's get back to talking about your background a little bit. You were talking about how you're a free soul. You grew up doing lots of fun things in Spain. Tell us more about those. Yeah, I mean, uh, I grew up in an island, so I, I was doing things of like uh, whatever island people do you know we, we we take our bikes we go play soccer in the street we we were like uh, hanging out most of the time hanging out with my friends uh yeah. i wasn't we weren't very strong on like a, a, a school and stuff like that it's more like we were just adventuring every day i wouldn't show at home for three days and my mom would be like fine with it you know <laughs> um so so yeah and most of the time i had a tennis club close close to home and I would spend a lot of time there too. I would go with my bike and just play with whoever was available. And yeah, that's how everything started. <laughs> that sounds so fun. And then you got into tennis. You were a tennis yeah. I was playing. Star. I was playing tennis and soccer uh, until I was maybe thirteen, something about that. And then I had to decide which one, which which sport I wanted to pursue. And um, in soccer, I was pretty good too. I and I I did choose tennis just because of the fact that in soccer I I would play really good and I would uh, score and and unfortunately I was say, were you a forward yeah. like yeah 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 I was like the guy that was going really fast and like yeah. you know and but unfortunately my my goalkeeper was uh, really bad so we keep losing because he couldn't stop the ball, right? So oh, that no. was pissing me off because I was like, wow, well, I'm playing really good. I'm still losing. So might as well play tennis, which if I play good, I win. And if I play bad, I lose. It's my fault. Nobody else's. So yeah. I ended up taking soccer, <laughs> uh, tennis. Okay. So, yeah. Good to know. And you are a tennis star. Now, do I have this right? Have you hit with Nadal a little bit? I, yeah, when, yeah, when I was... Uh, in Mallorca, it's a really, it's a little island, right? So yeah. there's not that many players that played uh, professionally over there. I was just starting my career, uh, playing futures and some challengers. And uh, when Rafa was being home, he either had to fly people over or he had the choice to have somebody local come, either me or some other uh, people that was playing at the same level. And we just uh, lucky enough to to hit some balls with them with him. That is so cool. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I have to say, I have to say he made me realize I wasn't going to make it also. <laughs> <laughs> he crushed your dreams. He crushed. Exactly. I, 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 I watched my, I watched my coach and I said, I said to him, dude, uh, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think I'm going to hit like him ever in my entire life. Even if I practice every day, 24 hours, I don't think it's going to happen. 
Dang, that had to be yeah. tough. Did you play on the yeah. clay? A lot? Uh, no, with him I used to practice in hardcore, but uh, mm. growing up always it was um, clay courts for me. Yeah. Okay. Do you think pickleball will ever be played on clay? Have you ever tried that? Damn, I I, I would be surprised if the ball bounces bad in a hardcore. I don't even want to imagine how it's gonna bounce in a clay court. <laughs> we'll have to see if that ever happens. Maybe. Well, you if that happens, it. I might be number one. <laughs> there you go. Okay, look out, world. Clay pickleball yeah. coming to yeah. you soon. <laughs> okay, well, then your tennis took you to Hawaii. I mean, how cool was it to live in um, Hawaii and play tennis? Yeah, yeah actually, um, yeah, I, I did quit tennis before oh. I went to college. Yes, I, I did play pro for, for a while, and then I stopped playing tennis. I was burned out. I didn't want to play anymore. Yeah. And so um, I, I received a, a, an email of a tennis recruiter from, from U.S. that, uh, that he, they saw me play back when I was 16. And they said, oh, you play really good. You, would you be interested to still pursue your tennis uh, in college? And I was like, sure. I mean, I haven't played in forever, but uh, I don't have a ranking. I don't have anything. So up to you guys. And then basically they told me, well, how about you train a little bit? And then you play a tournament and then we see from there um, if we want you or not. And, oh. and I did that. I trained for like two months again. Uh, it was a summer. It was like June and July. I trained hard again. Played a future in, uh, I don't ever know where, where the future was. But uh, I went through qualies and uh, won one or two rounds in main draw against, uh, <laughs> yeah, against a top 500 or something like this. I, I don't remember quite well. But uh, after the tournament, they told me, yes, we won you. And turned out I wasn't eligible for D1 because I played pro before. And NCAA rules banned me from D1 for one year. And so uh, since I wasn't really playing tennis anymore, I wanted to go to a place where I would enjoy my life rather than mm. being practicing hard every day. So Hawaii was the choice. Uh, my plan at the beginning was to to do one year in D2 and then change to D1. But I had so much fun that I said, guys, I'm staying in D2. I love you here. <laughs> so I stayed nice. in Hawaii. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And what besides tennis in Hawaii, like, what was the highlight of going to school there? Like, what was so special about it? Well, I would say I would say that uh, the local people in Hawaii they kind of have a, a, a same kind of life that I would have before yeah. uh, in Spain. Like, uh, I was going with the bike and playing soccer in the streets in Hawaii. They were surfing. Uh, all the kids are just going and skating and stuff like that. So I I did really like uh, that that uh, it was similar to the life I had before. And uh, the people is super nice, and I, I, we were not uh, super practicing five hours a day, so that Got was it. a highlight for me. <laughs> you, you like to keep it chill and go with the flow. It's super cool. And Jaume, then you found pickleball. Pickleball yeah. is now your life. <laughs> you are traveling yeah. the country. How did you find it? Um, well. It's it's uh, it's interesting because um, I never heard of pickleball before. I did hear one time in 2016 about pickleball, okay. um, but I didn't pay my, much attention to it. I was still playing college and uh, I just didn't didn't pay attention to it. But uh, uh, after I graduated, I I opened uh, kind of like a tennis uh, structure program in Hawaii that I was working on for the last uh, four or five years before I found Pickleball. And one day I got home and switched on the TV and uh, one of my uh, uh, opponents of college tennis back in the teams in D2 was Pablo Teles. And oh. Pablo was playing a final or a semifinal or something in TV against uh, Tyson. And, uh, and so I saw it and I tested him. I was like, dude, <laughs> What is this? You're in TV. That's pretty cool, right? And then uh, he was like, "Yeah, you should try." And uh, and little you know, I did uh, sign up for a for a five o tournament in California nice. in November or November 2022 or something. And uh, I borrowed a paddle because I didn't I didn't I didn't own a paddle. I didn't know how to count. I didn't, nothing. <laughs> so showed up there, 
and little did you know I won. <laughs> and and so, Unnatural. but it was a yeah, it was a five-o tournament. And so there was this person. His name was Don, and he was a, one of the vendors in the five-o tournament. And he said, "I'm a vendor in in the next PPA in in Takeya, Takeya Showcase, which was my first PPA ever." And he told me, uh, what about you come? We'll help you out with your stay and this and that. And um, I did show up to the tournament and I beat on the first round, I beat Julian Arnold, which he was still three or something like this. Yeah. And then I made it around to quarterfinals in my first ever tournament. And then I thought, well, I mean, if I borrow the paddle, I don't know how to count. And I made quarterfinals now, might as well give it a try. And here where we are. A year later, here, a year and a half. Yeah. Here you are. Wow, yep. what a story. Okay, I didn't realize that that's how you got into it. So thank you, Pablo, and thank you. You said Don, that was his name. Thank you to yeah. them <laughs> yeah. for really helping you get started on this journey. And what has been one of your favorite pickleball tournament memories so far? Um, I would say my favorite, it would be in, in Dallas, the week and a half that we had the uh, MLP and we had nationals. I, I, I had good results. I also got to meet uh, a lot of new people. I got to meet the owner and founder of CEO, which, uh, until then we only had uh, FaceTimes and we only had, uh, calls, but, uh, finally in Dallas, he came all the way from Australia to watch me. And, wow. and it was just a highlight that I did good. And on top of that, I meet him. He's a great guy. Um, mm -hmm. also I had like uh, another Spaniard, uh, friend that he, he helped me, he coached me in tennis and he, in, in college and he coached me in, in pickleball, you know, whatever he knows, he, he tells me and I, and I kind of try to do it and it worked out and. And so I had a lot of people that was close to me. Usually my results are uh, very tied to, to who am I hanging around during that tournament. If I'm having fun, most likely I'm winning. And if I'm bored, most likely I'm just getting out of there. So, so having but people you know, around me, it always, uh, it always helps me a lot. We need the good vibes and energy, and then we're going to yep. make it to the final. That's the yep. key. Pretty, I'm pretty, man. It, it worked. It worked for me like that in tennis too. Okay. In tennis, if whenever I was traveling with my with my good friends, I was making great results. Whenever I was traveling yeah. just with a coach or something, I was like, dude, get me out of here. I don't want it. <laughs> I think that's so true. Well, first of all, yeah, Nationals 2023 was just one of my favorite tournaments too because Maggie and I like had a great result as well. And yeah, we were both there on Sunday, Jaume. Go us. That was so yep. fun. And I'll never forget that. But I totally agree. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's like the tournaments where I'm around, you know, my people. And for us, it's when we have a SoCal crew that travels to a tournament. It just always makes you feel a little more at home, a little bit more comfortable. And I think that allows you to play better. So that's a really good take. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, Jaume. You are one of the most entertaining players on tour. You are always putting on a show and interacting with the crowd, and you're such a good player too. How do you balance keeping the focus of playing a big match but also having fun? Um, well, that's interesting. I, I am still working on that. Okay. Uh, I some a lot of times I got I get burned. I mean, the better the player I have in front. The more times I get burned when I try to like make the show and make the point longer and play the drops and all this kind of stuff because um, every ball that I give them, it gives them a chance to have a good shot. So the better player they are, the most likely a good shot is going to come at some point. If I give him 10 chances, guaranteed one of them is going to be good and I'm going to get burned. But uh, uh, I try to play point by point. I don't really like plan it before the point to do something right. like that. It just kind of develops that I get the upper hand on the point and I feel like I can play a little bit around. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, as I said, I get burnt a lot of times, but at least I make highlights for them and that makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do it for the highlight reel. No, you have so much fun. I remember we were just playing in Houston and you were just casually talking to the people in the crowd. And I just think that's so amazing that you're able to play at such a high level and, you know, keep it fun. But yeah, that's what brings you success for sure. Well, I have to, I have to say that uh, one of the reasons why I, I'm not that nervous when I do that is because 
like if I have to figure out myself what to do in every point, I kind of overthink a little bit maybe. So it's yeah. easier for me to just ask whoever is there, should I do this or that? And then they go like, yeah, yeah, surf forehand and do that. I was like, fine. And I'll just <laughs> do it. <laughs> and, and that's good. So, so whenever I'm playing a match, if anybody has a suggestion, just tell me because I'll do it. It don't matter. <laughs> you are open to the crowd coaching you. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Nice. Okay, Jaume. Well, this has been so fun chatting with you and learning more about your background. But I want to do a couple more get to know you questions to let the viewers know you a little bit better. So we're going to do this or that. Have you played that before? No, I say all the time this or that, but I don't okay. know what it is. <laughs> so I'm just going to ask you, you know, apples or strawberries, questions like that. Okay. Oh, okay, but don't ask me that one. I don't like either one. Oh, oh you don't? Oh, okay. <laughs> Good to know. Okay, let's let Mango ask or something else. <laughs> oh, so mango. Mango. Like mango. Okay, yeah. that's the go-to fruit. Got it. Okay, well, here we go. Let's see. Rock or EDM music? EDM. Me too, me too. Italian or Thai food? Thai food. Remember when you came and trained and we got Thai food? That's how we bonded, partner bonding. Yeah. <laughs> that was our first partner date. <laughs> yes, partner date, nice. Uh, breakfast or dinner? Oh, dinner for sure. It, unless the breakfast is big. Then, okay. But, okay, but dinner, yeah, I like dinner. I like, I like big meals. I don't like, like uh, a little breakfast thing. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Well, what about coffee? Hot coffee or iced coffee? Do you drink? I anything? never drink coffee. I'm caffeinated since I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> There's no like go to morning drink to wake you up? Water. Wake me up. I'm really? awake every time. <laughs> You're ready to go. You have the I'm high ready to go. all the and time. Yeah, sometimes I'll actually wake up at like a to pee at like 4 a.m. and I'd be like, D do I have to go to sleep again? Like, I'm ready. I just, I don't want to sleep anymore. Okay, good yeah. to know. Okay, yeah. um, this is an interesting one. Are you more of a talker or a listener? Um, I guess, I guess both, I would say. Okay. Uh, I, I like to talk. I mean, I, I, whenever they ask me questions, I'm literally, I'm definitely not the kind of person that will approach you and start telling you about my problems or something. So okay. yeah, I prefer if, if it's about complaints or stuff like that, I prefer to listen. Got it. I will, I, I you won't find me telling you like, yeah, weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Got it. What about camping or a cruise? Uh, definitely a cruise. I love I'm cruise. a prince. Have you I'm a one? prince. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I've gone to cruises. Yes. Okay, nice. Um, concert or sporting event? A concert, definitely, hundred percent. Who do you want to see in concert? Um, uh, I don't know. I I I I saw Bad Bunny like four weeks ago, and that was my my actual to go. Which I'm gonna go see him again in Atlanta. <laughs> Just oh, because. no way. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, Bad Bunny is good. He has yeah. good music. Yeah. Okay. Math or science? This is taking you back to like... <laughs> science. Science. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. And the last question. Singing or dancing? Oh, dancing. 100%. <laughs> dancing have you taken a dance class ever or do you just have the natural rhythm um i have yeah i have taken dance classes i cool. uh yes i used to back when i was 15 years old or yeah 15 years old my my girlfriend at the time she was a dancer so oh. yes so i was going to see her a lot uh making her shows in hotels and stuff like that and I did take some dancing lessons and uh, I learned dancing back at the day because of her. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Who knows? Maybe you could have been on, you know, American. Don't push Got it. I have, I have a lot of talent, but don't push it. 
<laughs> Got it. Well, the last question I'm going to ask you, because I love to ask, you know, if you win the gold medal on the PPA tour in singles or doubles, and you get to go to a karaoke bar after, what song are you singing? Um, I guess I'll go with my song is Bruno Mars, and we're going to put Runaway Baby. Wow. Okay. I would yep. love to hear this. We need to win the tournament and then go celebrate at karaoke. There's some good spots in Orange oh, County. hundred uh, percent. Sign me up. Even if I lose the tournament, we're going. Either way, we're going to make it fun. And that's what's so great about you, Jaume, is pickleball is so fun. It brings people together. It's the best sport ever. I always like to emphasize that on the show. Everyone needs to play. And you do such a good job of keeping it fun, keeping it positive, and bringing that community together. So thank you for sharing your journey so far with us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I I really enjoy uh, all the support that I'm getting uh, from from crowds. Uh, they, they, every time I show up in a tournament, they, there is so many people that want pictures and signatures and it's only good words towards me and uh that's what keeps me like uh going uh because i usually i get i get burnt real quick of things i get uh i get bored um so just uh, the people interacting with me like that and being so nice to me it keeps me going and it makes me do better makes me one of the that better that is awesome to hear wow jaume well thank you so much for coming on this episode of the merry-go-round podcast where can people find you on social media uh i only have my instagram it's uh jaume mv no jaume m v i c h um mm -hmm. yeah maybe you can link it there because probably they don't know how to spell jaume jaume j-a-u-m-e got it <laughs> god i can do it <laughs> that is good okay we will get that information in the description yeah. and yeah. thank you to everyone who listened to this episode of the Mary go round podcast. You can find me at Mary Pickleball on Instagram and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>